When I arrived at Liverpool, right, Carragher and 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 Gerard are there. You know, they're the staples at that in that team, and he just looked after me like you wouldn't believe. And 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 I had a difficult spell not scoring, and um, he helped me with you know most of the people in that crowd. He knows, you know, like, so I feel like, <laughs> honestly, like, I mean, it, 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 his friends and family, you know, well, we're 30, 40 of them at, at games, you know, like, that's a loud voice in, uh, in the crowd. And they speak to their mates and they, in local pubs and, like, the whole local area were like, I, I genuinely believe that, that him and, um, you know, he was a huge part of me sort of being recognised by the fans, um, even in that difficult period. Uh, so I can't, have a bad word. To do say you mean about like an endorsement? Do you do you feel like you got an endorsement? Yeah, I think he, I think he basically said, you know, like lay off him, support him, um, because he's working so hard and he's trying to, you know, and he's just not coming off at the moment, but it will. And I genuinely believe that sort of demeanor and that and I, he might he might turn around here and say that's complete bollocks. I didn't say any of that, <laughs> but I felt that he did. Um, because everyone I spoke to, his mates and everyone of you know his dad and his, his brother, like and, and and his friends and like they just were so accommodating with my family. Like my mum and my dad felt completely at home in Liverpool coming to the games because they were so looked after in the crowd by the Carragher's, um, by his family and by his friends. And those away trips, my dad swears blind that they were the best times of his life because Carragher's old man and Carragher's yeah. mates and they all looked after him in Europe and like he went on the you know. A few beers with him, <laughs> with them, and he just loved it, and he he felt part of a, and that's what Liverpool is, and um, it is like a, a, a city, but it's a village, and you know they all stick together no matter what, and my dad felt a part of that, and I felt a part of that, I, and even now to this day, I I still do feel a part of that, and that is special, and that's down to people like Jamie Carragher for for helping me that become amazing? that. Amazing, Crouch. If you were to partner up with a, a number nine in the Premier League at the moment. From the top six sides, we're talking Haaland at City, Firmino at Liverpool, Aubameyang at Chelsea, Martial at United, Richarlison at Spurs, or Jesus at Arsenal. Who would you partner up with? Yeah, you see, you're looking for... Like, they're not traditional number nines there, are they? Other than Haaland, maybe. Um, but if I was partnering one, it would be... I've got out of two, I think, Firmino or Jesus. Uh, just for me personally, I just think unselfish uh, players that I could play with. I think feed off players that are uh, would sacrifice themselves. So you're talking entirely selfishly. Yes, yes, exactly right, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> so, but, but, I didn't get to play at that level for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to be you have to be selfish, like as certainly as a number nine. There, I, like I'd, I'd entirely be selfish in that scenario. Uh, playing with Haaland would be it would be a great, but I don't think we'd compliment each other. Uh, I think we'd get in each other's way. Um, and he'd probably score more than me. So uh, <laughs> I think playing in that Liverpool team and having Firmino would be a dream. I'd love to play in City's team, I would. But then I look at I look at Liverpool's team and, and, and like the fullbacks crossing it. And like sometimes when I see Trent's crosses, I'm like, oh, I just would absolutely love to to, to be on the end of them. I'm sure we could <laughs> I'm sure we can make that happen. Do you reckon? Yeah, like I think you should have your opportunity well, I could to play see. up for Liverpool one more time. No, but I think we should get <laughs> Trent putting balls into you and it's sort of that mix of new school, old school kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be fun to see. Well, I just look at him now, like his, his, his deliveries and things like that. Like, hasn't really had anyone like to, to bury loads of them, mm. but he's still you know, the top assists all the time. And Robertson, to, to be fair. I can't do a midfield without putting Steven Gerrard in it. We've talked about him many a time on this pod, you know. Like, I think he's the best player that I've I've played with. He's everything that a footballer should be. And you know? I mean, like, I just feel like um, as central midfield, even if you're a top player in an England dressing room, you'd still sort of have that kind of, like, respect. And, and also, um, you know, playing for, like, a, a club like, like Liverpool and being, like, that, in that such high regard at such a top club, um, it's difficult to argue with with that. I think one of the interesting things for me, I used to hate him because I was a Manchester. I'm a Manchester United fan. He was one of those players that would always perform against Manchester United. He'd always score goals. He'd always make things happen against my football team. Amazing to watch. But Crouch, we've, we, you know, we spoke about Derry, midfielder. Now he's a coach. Gerard. Now he's a manager. What's that? Why? Why is it midfielders that seem to be the ones that are coming through? As the coaches. Mm. Yeah, that, I know what you're saying. Like, I, just, I just think it's the character. Like, you could see it. Like, you know, Scott Parker as well, like you mentioned. Like, 
the ones that I played with, like you, you knew Stevie would be a, would be a manager. Like he lives and breathes it. And not that I don't, but like I, I don't know. It's a different mentality. Like to go from that intense as a footballer and then go straight into to management. It takes a certain person, you know. Like I I did want to spend time with my family. I wanted to have a little break. I wanted to try other things, you know. Like football was my life, my whole life. But then when I retired at 38, I thought, you know what? Like let's try something different. So this, yeah, this hat trick ball was uh, at Anfield. It was the early kickoff, I think, as Arsenal when I scored a hat trick. But like some of the comments are great, you know. Like you say, they're not just signatures; they they relate to me, uh, which is it's good to look back on. You know, it's a brilliant big man wouldn't have done it without your old mate Pennant. Um, <laughs> look at this one, <sighs> top draw, well done from Stevie G. You may get a few games now. Uh, <laughs> Rafa Benitez <laughs> oh no you may get a few games now ahead of Kite Jamie Carrick has wrote that I think um, Rafa would have been like steady yeah. <laughs> steady, steady calm on. down <laughs> this is know it. your place <laughs> Rafa <laughs> yeah know your place <laughs> Luis Garcia here. this is a good one interesting one I think this is Luis Garcia well done big man let's see if you can do it three times in bed now <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that even works really <laughs> It's quite funny. Uh, yeah, some good ones. Cosmic yeah. from Bellas. It's great, yeah. this. It's like a museum. It's good. You look around. Yeah. It's good. Do you know what? It's good. Everything tells a story in here, which I think rooms should do, really, in general. When do you think Gerard's going to end up being Liverpool manager? Um, or do you think he's got like 10 more years of... No, I don't think 10 more years. I think, you know, I think he's got a, he's got to do his apprenticeship if you like I think he's you know he's, Klopp's got that job for as long as he wants it and then as soon as he leaves I think Stevie needs to just be in the right position like doing well sort of so his stock's high and then you know it'd be it'd be a no-brainer I imagine Was he alpha of the dressing room then? Yeah 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 I yeah. mean the local lads as well are like what a player you know so for me I, I found myself trying to impress Stevie more than I was man the manager <laughs> <laughs> which honestly which is a mad way of looking at it but that's that's how it was. I don't get being a captain. I'm not, like, it's never really appealed to me. I don't know what good comes out of it. So every captain you've had as part of your team... <laughs> Apart would, from lifting a trophy. But every captain has to go in. It's like an, It probably is a kind of arranged thing. They have to walk in and discuss. Like For me, the visions of like Stevie G walking into the manager's office to go and <laughs> negotiate the Christmas party. <laughs> it's, mate, like, it happens. it's mad. It happens, yeah. And then they come back and report it. Like, it's yeah. like he's settled on he's he's settled on he's settled on you know one night in <laughs> Dublin <laughs> <laughs> so is that how it actually is or? it's exactly right yeah you go in well obviously like and, then, and everyone's like at, like little little cats waiting for for, for the for the mum to come back <laughs> literally going are, they, are we in and like it's a huge deal I mean of Christmas party it, it, and like you know Stevie G comes back this month two nights Dublin <laughs> We what? spoke to Casper Schmeichel about it, didn't we? And, and the best of the fancy dress ones, where you go out full fancy dress. It's hard to tell which players what. Well, the you best know, one was Stevie G when he when he was dressed as the oh, old man. That was genius. And he was in the mobility scooter. Genius. And there was like people taking pictures outside the thing, and they they just let it, it helped him in. Yeah, genius. I didn't even know that it was Stevie. What a captain! I wonder if that was decided with the manager. Like, imagine they were in the creative input into the into the outfits, into the outfits and everything. Didn't help me. I was dressed as a parrot. Right. Let's move on from Glenn Johnson. Oh, who's, your, who's your second right back? I, I, I hope he doesn't hate me. My second right back is Steve Finnan. <laughs> of course. I, I, do you know why? Because I I, I love this man. Yeah. I, I you know it, what a fantastic play. He set me up so many times as well. And just, um, you know, you must have some stats on him because there is some amazing stats on Stephen. There's a great fact. The only player to have played at all four levels of English football, the Conference League, the UEFA Cup, the Intertoto Cup, the Champions League and a World Cup. Impressive. Wow. I remember I remember sitting with him uh, when I signed for Liverpool. And we, like, we were we were, good, we were very close. And he was at Welling, I think, he non-league. And uh, Notts County, they won uh, Division 2, II, Division 1. Um, championship with Fulham. Won that as well, you know. And then won a Champions League at Liverpool. You know, it's not been done. That. He's won at every single level, you know, right from the bottom. Um, and so humble, such a lovely fella. And we got we got on great. Like when I first signed for Liverpool, he was probably my, my good pal because he was sort of from, from London and um, he took me under his wing a little bit. He'd been there, you know, just one in Istanbul and he was a, you know, firm 
it was solid, solid right back for Liverpool, like very, very underrated. Um, and yeah, we I spent a, like a load of time with him, and you know he didn't he didn't drink, so after games, you know, he drive us around, and <laughs> so he was the designated driver. Yeah, That's why like, he's made this eleven. No, right? it wasn't it's just useful. that. I mean, you know, he was he was the designated driver, and it was handy because he would stay out with me. But was he fun? Yeah, like he was great to be around, and um, you know, always. Just, you know, when you leave somewhere, he's like, you know, got the car. Like, great, you know. Yeah. And then we'd, we'd nip off. One of the best goals I've ever scored, possibly the best goal I've ever scored, you know, was um, was from Steve Finn and just like knocked it round the full back and, and, and dinked it across from my overhead kick um, against Galatasaray. Um, and I've got that on my wall, you know. And if that, if that, if Steve Finn and hadn't put that cross in or beat that man, that, that wouldn't be on my wall and that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Because he's so uh, humble and because he doesn't, shoot his mouth off or doesn't do many press conferences or doesn't put himself out there um, people forget about him you know I love a forward and I think the first one I'm going to go for is Fowler uh, played with him obviously came back it wasn't real peak Fowler like early Liverpool days um, you know he'd been around and then he'd come back to Liverpool and I played with him but uh, again I've gone for a top fella like um, I roomed with him uh, quite a bit and we had such a laugh and like for me gr growing up and like watching Robbie Fowler like just loved him, you know, like, absolutely loved his, like, his goals and the way he sort of carried himself and he, he looked like he had a laugh and I loved that about him. There was that time as well, was he hidden up at the top oh, or, or was when, that you? When he hid in the wardrobe. It, that was it. Single, single, like, one of the most funniest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, when, when, uh, when it was all going off on this trip, you know, the Bellamy Lisa mm. situation happened in Portugal and Dudek was in a bit of trouble, Sammy Hoopia threw up and, um, <laughs> There was a lot going on that night. A raffle come out in his pajamas, and um, just the thought that just reminiscing of when Fowler was in that in that cupboard above his head. Um, well, it feels like an out of body experience now. When I, when I think back to that, like if my you know being young and watching Robbie Fowler and seeing him in that wardrobe, thinking how have I got myself yeah. in this situation? When I'm playing for Liverpool. The manager's barking at me. For, for, where's Robbie and I and I could see him in the cupboard above his head one of the finest things I've ever seen is Robbie he doing the finger going... on the mouth <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wasn't was he <laughs> he's going I'm, I was going I'm trying my best to hold my laugh in and just <laughs> get through it like he could have just been in bed and they would have moved on to the next room but he wasn't but that was Robbie and that was great about him from looking at Robbie from a stats perspective genuinely blew my mind yeah really didn't realise he was that good a player, straight up. So he's the only player in the Premier League to score over 100 goals with his left foot. He's the only player to score four plus goals with his left foot in a single game. He's done that twice. Wow. Salah, right now, is on 99. Really? Wow. But that's the levels. I mean, he, no, that I was, you're a bit younger than me. He was unbelievable. When he burst on the scene at 18, he's seen nothing like it. He's seen no finishing like it. It was phenomenal. Because it's all about respect in sport, in a sense, is that you want the manager to respect you and tell you that you're not in the team instead of it being kind of on a board or yeah. this or that. I found that difficult under Rafa, that. You know, like just turning the board and going, not seeing your name on it. You know, like I used to well document the Champions League final, like just turn the board and just not been on it. And like playing most of the Champions League, like pr pretty much every game. And you just say nothing at that point. Well, you must what can just you be do? Like... Just like, I'm not on it, like... Do other guys nudge you, or like, do you look for other reactions? Well, it's or? just just one of those things. Like, I mean, what you can't you can't change it. I, I, like, you know, the Champions League final is much bigger than one person, isn't it? So it's difficult to kick off as much as I wanted to throw tables around. You know, I'm not that uh, number one. I'm not that type of character anyway. But number two, it's 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 bigger. It's bigger than me. It's about getting a result. But I think there's certain players that you you kind of want a bench in a sense in those games to get a reaction I just don't think that's you yeah just um, I mean obviously the, like the champs like the, the other thing was going away of England like I remember going away of England scoring three goals in two games and coming back and Rafa sort of said to me that um, don't get carried away you know I was like what he said don't get so he put me on the bench for like three games and I'd be like I just I, like, I don't get that mentality like I'm not that type of person to get carried away with my own success. You know, like I wouldn't, that would never even cross my mind. I was just buzzing and like confident. I wonder so what I'm he thinking, meant by that. Well, I think he was trying to put, trying to bring me back down to earth. And I was thinking actually, like I need to play. Like I'm flying. I'm, I'm so confident. 
and I'm ready to score. You know, like I'm, I'm going to do well. I'm, like I'm just full of confidence. I went from that period where I didn't have, I struggled like for confidence to then the opposite. Like mm. I'd go into games just knowing I was scoring, like for England, for Liverpool. I was going to games just knowing. In the England get stuff was mad. I was like getting 15 minutes in the, the games. I knew I'd score. Like I just knew. I was just that confident and he sort of like just stopped it. And I was like, I just don't understand that mentality of like stopping someone in a rich vein of form. Or do you have hindsight on it? Do you think it was right no, what no, he was doing? Or? No, I don't think it was right decision at all, no. I think you've got to know your characters. I think I think there are players that would would get carried away with all, with it all. But that wasn't me. And I think if you know, that was the problem. I think Rafa's, I love Rafa. I wouldn't have a bad word to say about him. I love him as a manager. Um, you know, gave me the opportunity to play for the best club in the world. And, you know, I, I'll always thank him for that. And he's a, he's a great person, but... Um, he wasn't very good with people, if you know what I mean. Like he was an amazing coach, and he was really mm. t- tactically and, aware, yeah. and he'd do things that would surprise you. And you know, he was methodical in everything he did. But um, dealing with you on a human level, he wasn't very good. Was there anything in terms of the different coaches that you had that they would have a theme throughout the entire day of training, in a sense? Yeah. Well, obviously, like I say, um, you know, there, there was. Different managers was so different, um, you know, through the course of my career, you know, in, in the early days and the later days, obviously there was so much more um, staff in the later days designated for for each individual thing. Um, and it became, you know, everyone sort of had a piece of you, if you know what I mean. But um, I'll probably touch on Rafa and Rafa's regime just because it was so methodical what he did. Um uh, even to the minute, I mean, it was like, say the session would be an hour 20 in his mind, he would time it from the warm-up and it would not go over or under that one minute 20. And it, for me, obviously, coming from Harry Redknapp at Southampton to, to then being in Liverpool and having that, I, I wanted to do like stuff after training, like quite often I'd want to do extra finishing Um I used to really enjoy doing that and I'd work on specific things that I need to work on and then I'd probably usually have a bit of fun at the end and have a bet with the lads and who could score the most goals and we'd we'd have a few quid on it or a bottle of wine. And then, you know, that was good good fun. But like Rafa was like, no, that's the session finished. And even if you hadn't played on the Saturday and you wanted to do extras, he'd be like, no. you know, this Rafa is- wouldn't let you do extra practice if no. you weren't. Yeah. That's interesting. But I isn't feel it? like it's why. A, why was that? Do you think? I think it's just it's it, everything is he needs to be in control of absolutely everything, and, and ultimately that was the, the downfall of him. You know, he wanted control of the transfers and the you know very much like Alex Ferguson. I think he saw himself that was where, the way he was going at Liverpool. He wanted to control absolutely everything, and I think that was you know possibly one of the reasons why it, it just didn't work at the end. But don't you find that restricting as a player? You know, you hear all these stories about the players that used to be in training for longer and would be Beck's outside doing free kicks mm. and that's what made him different. Ronaldo, the same. Is, is that type of structure, maybe it's healthier because it keeps everyone from feeling that they do have to do that extra stuff, maybe. But, but is the flip side of that that you're being a bit restricted then yeah, to do yeah. the extra that could make you extra special from other players. Well, this this is this was my thing. I, I still still felt that I was learning the game. I think I signed there at like 24. I was still there's still lots of things to improve on. Um, and he was very much about the team shape and the team dynamic, and very you know a lot less so about the individual. So it wasn't really. It didn't feel like it was actually about me improving my own game it was about the team all the time like for instance like one of his sessions was um it was like a warm-up and we'd do this thing where we'd all be in a team shape and um we there'd be various cones set out in the formation that we were the team we were going to play on the weekend and there would be no ball whatsoever and Rafa would shout left back and we'd all have to funnel over without a ball and be in, in the positions that we should be in if the left back got the ball it was like central midfielder. We'd all have to come back and we'd all be in positions if he got the ball, if he got the ball. And we'd all be moving as as a unit. And it was one of the most boring sessions <laughs> I've, ever, I've ever been a part of. But I got it, you know. like I, it, Because when the, cent, the left back or, or the centre-half, left-sided centre-half got the ball, 
instinctively you just knew where to be. You, you, you there was what, no. Would you have to sprint? To, so let's sprint say out. the imaginary left back has is, is been the shout or the imaginary right back. Would you all, in all seriousness, sprint. run to the? Well, you had to. It was like, and if you don't go out with the intensity that he liked, he would stop it, and we'd we'd keep doing it until. But did we, no one it, piss around? How did no one piss around in no, that? We, sort so of... we were all so slightly, like so. There was all the whole squad was was involved. So there was twenty five players, and so there might be you know six midfielders, but they'd all be in their specific positions. So the whole team, even the subs as well, would have to move as one over. So say it the... just sounds like what's the time, Mister Wolf? Or... Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Premier League players doing what's the time, Mr. Wolf? First thing in the morning. Exactly right. And we'd we'd go over, and as we'd go over to, so say the centre half got it, I would be the one who was most intense, and then obviously the centre halves obviously would would come up, but with, with not the same sort of intensity. But because I'm close to the ball, to potentially try and win it, and then you know the the the, the, uh, the say the left winger, for instance, would 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 tuck in and be be close to me, you know, inviting it to go to the fullback, and then we'd go and close down, and you'd show sort of back inside or or outside, whichever way he wanted us to show them to sort of play, and um, it was yeah, like I say, it was monotonous, but I can't say it didn't it didn't work because if you were two yards outside of where you he wanted you to be, it, he would tell you, we'd rein it in, and you'd do it, and you'd all know your jobs. Let's talk about specifics. Rafa Benitez, 2007. I'm just going to bring you Crouchy. Second leg of the Champions League against Chelsea. Semi-final, 1-0 down. Mm. What was training like in the build-up to that game? We'd have a Makaleli cone, a Lampard cone, and an Obi Mikel cone. Um, and we'd, we'd, we'd but does be... he put the cones down in front of you? Does he do, like, imagining, like, my old Sunday league guy, he's putting the four cones down. He's like, Lampard, Makaleli, like... Exactly right, yeah. Um, and, and but also we'd have we'd have you know maybe the reserves would come over, and they would have them play exactly like you know the centre forward for the for the youth team would be Drogba. Would they be uh, in little badges or was it just you they'd, they'd have their bibs on? Did you match them up by how they look? <laughs> <laughs> you know, with red ass, just to clarify this, because obviously we shouldn't encourage it, but people might want to do it. Um, what is the what is the distance well, that you would... Traditionally, it's just outside the box. So it'd be on the line of the box. Um, but if you're feeling confident and everyone feels confident that they're in their own ability, bring it forward. Penalty spot. Put it on the penalty spot, you know. Um, get it on the penalty spot and you blast it as hard as you possibly can. And it's uh, it's fun, you know. It's great when you get one off the back of the head, you know, like that. <laughs> it's slightly higher than... Than the arse. But obviously they're bent over in the, in the hunched position. And any movement, everyone starts again. Do you know what I mean? So the rules are, any movement, any flicker or flinch, we all, we all go again. Yeah, yeah so... Absolutely. And also, if you miss the target, you go in with them. So, so you then add to the so line... If you lose control of your blast and it goes over the bar or wide... Um, you're in as well. So what's your... what If you're to any anybody taking a shot in red arse, would you say it's more important... But I suppose accuracy is more important than power. Yeah, but the, you, you, no one wants to see a side foot. No. <laughs> Nobody. I mean, There's that's no an, pride in that. It's an unwritten rule. I mean, anyone who side foots it will never play again. <laughs> as soon as someone hits a, an arse clean, it's... Uh, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's phenomenal. It really is the... This is all or nothing, isn't it? Yeah, but you've got, you're all in. And listen, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've gone all in and I've, I've gone over and I've, I've got myself in there. <laughs> but you've got to go. I mean, you're all... It, what, it's, not, it's like what you play for. It's like people saying golf, you know, have we come to lay up? No. We're, we're amateur golfers. We're going to have a great day and we're going to try and eagle something instead of, you know, getting a bogey. Who are we imagining that was bent over on the line and you're taking a shot? Or, or one of your other teammates is taking a shot? Uh, well, I mean, it's been everyone. Everyone you can imagine that I've played with. So is... gerard has been bent over on the line yeah. there. I think there was a picture of him. I think that's why we had to sort of go up asses in. Like, we had to pull the sloggies up. Um, because I think, I'm sure, you know, at Millwood, obviously, there's people over the wall that watch training. And if someone's got a picture of... <laughs> I think it's out there. <laughs> so don't quote me on it being Gerard, but it might have been. And I yeah. think it became a... I think it might have been a time where I, I couldn't score. And they I think the press made a thing of it like as if he was taking the piss out of me, I, I couldn't hit. 
I could do him. <laughs> oh, we need to get this picture. This could have been the downfall of Red Ass, really, at that time. It, we brought it back. Um, it was a big thing at Tottenham and uh, Stoke as well. But I think he had his ass out and um, <laughs> someone took a snap of it. And, it, you know, obviously it's not, it's not great look, is it? I have located the picture, the headline for the story. I told you Crouchy couldn't hit a cow's ass with a banjo. Wow. Oh, fucking hell. Where's the picture? Oh my God, it's better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Gerard? <laughs> oh, it's the... How don't I know about this? So the picture I'm looking at right now is Gerard. Uh, but it's exactly as you're imagining, everyone. Bent over, his shorts down, his ass exposed. It's just an extraordinary picture. What headline though as well? <laughs> I told you you couldn't hit a cow's ass with a banjo. You're right, but the papers, oh, there's the papers, papers do spin things. But papers do spin things because you, what this is, is this is just red ass, isn't it? That's it's what you're saying. Red ass, Whereas yeah. what they're suggesting they're, is they're trying that to make, Madison, you were so shit at, at striking a ball <laughs> that even Gerard would bend over and like get his ass out to try and encourage you yeah. and you still couldn't hit it. Like, it yeah, that's basically, yeah. Whereas the truth of it is technically Gerard's done something wrong to be red ass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah.